Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Friday, August 24th, 2012. We begin with exciting news from the world of technology. Researchers at the Wheel Cornell Medical College have developed and tested a new kind of prosthetic eye. This device could help the around 25 million people that are blind from retinal damage, most of which can't be helped by any conventional treatments. To better understand the new prosthetics, let's review how vision works. Photoreceptors in the retina react to light, and these visual signals get converted into nerve impulse. These impulses get sent to the brain by ganglion cells, which are essentially the retina's output. Current prosthetics attempt to bypass any damaged tissue and stimulate ganglion cells directly, either by electrodes or the insertion of light-sensitive proteins via gene therapy. However, these methods only produce very limited vision, spots and edges of light that allow for basic navigation. What those technologies are missing is the retina's code, because in a functioning eye, visual input isn't directly converted into electrical output. The neural circuitry between the photoreceptors and ganglion cells have patterns for converting the signals, and these patterns can be abstracted to mathematical equations. It's these equations that were integrated into the new kind of prosthetic, allowing for the conversion of visuals into patterns the brain can make more sense of. Once converted, the prosthetics actually re-emit light onto the ganglion cells, which, like we mentioned before, are genetically engineered to become directly light-sensitive. Now that may seem overly complicated, but the gene therapy is just an accurate method for stimulating the ganglion cells after the signal has been converted by the device. After the promising experiments with mice, they hope to quickly develop a human model for clinical trials. It could potentially give blind people near-normal vision, including facial details, and they're already working from a monkey's retinal code, which is very similar to a human. Our next story comes from the world of material science. An international research team has been studying nanoporous gold to uncover its interesting properties. For the most part, gold is a useful material because it's highly conductive, but also because it's incredibly inert, meaning it doesn't easily react with other chemicals. But this is only true for bulk gold. On smaller scales, gold acts very different. Both nanoporous and nanoparticles made from gold have catalytic properties. For some review, catalysts are substances that accelerate chemical reactions without being used up in them. Nanoporous gold, MPG for short, is more stable than nanoparticles, so the researchers examined the material with transmission electron microscopy to find out why it has these properties. The MPG was created using a silver-gold alloy that was then chemically treated to remove the silver, leaving behind a complex 3D structure made mostly of gold. They found that the main source of the catalytic activity was defects in the surface. It's particularly good at catalyzing the oxidation of carbon monoxide, meaning an electrochemical reaction in which carbon dioxide loses electrons. Further study of NPG will investigate its potential use as fuel cell catalysts, as it's still quite resilient like bulk gold. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.